Hello and welcome once again to India Today, India Tomorrow, this unique show where we give you a slice of life by cutting across generations. And today we have another special pair with us. Joining us now on India Today, India Tomorrow, the lovely Janvi Kapoor and her father, Boni Kapoor. Appreciate both of you joining us. Wonderful to have you well, on you the show. Well, you added an adjective for my daughter. Why not for me? Lovely Janvi Kapoor and handsome Boni Kapoor, you could have... <laughs> handsome Boni Kapoor and lovely Janvi Kapoor. Is he always like that? Always. Is he sort of, in a way, upset that all the attention is on his lovely little daughter? But the I'm attention happy with is I'm first, happy. I'm always happy. on him. <laughs> Oh, I see. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. We just get like, we stand under his umbrella. So he's the <laughs> sun that shines. <laughs> well, you know, because I've seen these lovely photographs that you put up on Instagram over the years of you with your dad, uh, your sister, you and dad. And it seems almost like you are daddy's girl in those pictures. All, all the love showered by him on you and vice versa. Your idea to go out there public and shower this love on, on dad? She does that because she's close to my, I mean, to her brothers, Arjun, she's close to Anshula. So you will see a lot of group pictures, all four children with me. In fact, they're my biggest support system in these, of in the last four, five years, they've been a the biggest support, support system. I'm me. going to come to that in a moment, but is that your idea, the Instagram picture? Is, that, is this affection the way you are? I think the first few pictures that you showed me as a reference were actually uploaded by mom. Um, and then after that, I think you post pictures with the people that you spend the most amount of time with. And I think it's like an Instagram culture thing now. Every time it's someone's birthday, you wish them. It's not an actual birthday wish unless you wish them on Instagram um, or make a post out of it. And, and I've, we've, obviously, he's my dad. Most of my most memorable moments in life have been with him. And, I tend to capture it and share it sometimes. No, the reason I'm asking you this is because it almost seems as if today's actors don't have any sense of privacy. You know, you have a party, you have a dinner with dad and you all end up putting up these pictures on Instagram. But see, that's a, that's a choice and that still I think is a luxury in these times because that's as private as it's been in my life when I have a say in what I want to share. But more often than not, when you get papped outside places that you're visiting, I think that's more an infringement or, or... So you could go to a shop nearby and you might have suddenly someone rushing by you, paparazzi. Are you okay with that or not? It's very flattering. I don't think I can... Com any actor you enjoy can complain it. about... What can I say? Oh no, it's so hard that people give me attention. I think it's... <laughs> I, I mean, I need to value it. Obviously, there are days where it gets hard to... Uh, you know, you're, you're stressed about things, you've had a fight with your sister, you're stressed about your film getting delayed and you've had a bad workout and not slept and then suddenly you step out of the gym and there are like 10 people waiting with cameras and you're bloated and you're not looking your best. So it's not the most fun then. <laughs> but um, but it's, it's, I think it would be spoiled and ungrateful of me to complain about it, so I won't. Is that, is that the big difference since you've observed the Hindi film industry for what, 50 years now? Is that the big difference that now today's actors and actresses are out there constantly promote, have to do a lot of self-promotion in a way, have to be part of this social media, Instagram, Twitter, you're all over the place. Well, this is something which is new, but you see, having gone through different phases, different decades, had different kind of uh, uh, situations, different kind of exposure, different kind of, you know, entire activity has gone through a sea change at this point of time. Mm -hmm. And where I'm concerned in the earlier days, as I was talking to you earlier, film were promoted only on two mediums. One was the hoardings and the posters on the streets. The other was, you know, we had this film tab, uh, paper, news, Indian Express used to come out with screen magazine, a screen newspaper. It used to come every Friday. So, you know, ads in that paper and hoardings and posters on streets. That was it. And the trailer in the theaters. And the trailers would come only one or two weeks before the release. That was the only mode of promoting a film, only mode we could see. And the actors were seen only on occasion like premieres, which is why you would see premieres of earlier films where they used to be hordes of crowd outside, outside because they would get a chance to see all the actors coming in for the premiere. But Papa, you created this monster a little bit of promotion, I think, with Rupki Rani Churonka Raja. I remember hearing stories that he organized a tour for Mom and Anil Chachu to promote in places to go to the cricket stadium. He made action figures. 
No, no, no. But but Sri Devi didn't. You know, your mum probably did not need promotion, no, right? Papa I mean, when she was she... number one out there, yeah. you don't need to yeah, be from. You know, she... See, let let me let me mm. correct her. It was not Rupi Rani Chonuga. It was Mister India. Ah, Mister India. Sorry. Where I taken Anil to uh, Sharjah. Okay. You know, uh, we as part of your promotion. As part of the promotion, and Anil was dressed up as Mister India, and he went out to toss with Sunil Gavaskar. Wow. And he, you know, those days there was no satellite channel. There was only Doordarshan. And Doordarshan didn't have any restriction. Okay, by AQ, bad time is standing get up. And we used to have hoardings, you know, those small panels around the boundary line also. So that's where I started promoting uh, my. So, so is it easy? Was it easier to make a film 30, 40 years ago than it is today? Is the pressure greater today to see? Is that Friday, you know, that. Release date, the pressure on a producer, is it greater today than it was 30, 40 see, years ago? Pres pressure was always there. But you see, situations differ and the pressures differ. You see, in the, as I said, those days promotion was just these kind of mediums, you know, posters, hoardings and trailers. It was, you know, something which was out of the box what I did for Mr. India. In fact, I had pencil boxes made, erasers made. Oh, really? And, you know, uh, the, the two popular magazines were Stardust and Cineblitz. And I had audio cassette trailer. You know, the, they were songs which had only the mukhada, you know, just the teaser of a song and which was given free with the magazines. Because, you know, today you have OTT, you have Instagram, you have YouTube. Attention spans, people say, are getting less. How do I get people to the cinema theatres? Brahmastra has worked in getting people to the theatre, but people wonder, is is the world of cinema completely changed from the time you started to wear Janvis today? Well, definitely it has changed. And there are things for better also. And at the same time, we've lost out on a few things. What's the best thing that's happened now? Best thing that has happened is that there's a lot of uh, free promotion available because most of the actors are on social media. Yeah. So, you you know, the digital domain is such that you're you're promoting the film right across the globe in one shot, in one go. And what's the worst thing? Worst thing is too much of exposure. You know, it, it, let me take that to you, Janvi. You're 25 and you're all over the place. What are you doing? You're brand ambassador for, for Nika. Apart from doing all your films, you've got various advertisements. Do you feel that there's too much exposure or there's nothing like too much ex exposure? The more you get, the better, better it gets. I've been told that I need to think like that, but fortunately or unfortunately, I think I'm a little bit of a purist in my approach, and I think that if it was left up to me, I would happily do without the exposure, and uh, if that guaranteed that I would still get to do the films that I want to do, then I, I, I would be happy and I'd be fine. Uh, let me ask you a direct question, okay. a question that is swimming around Bollywood all the time, nepotism. Yes. People say that do you get a break because your dad is a producer, your mom was a top actress? Does that make things easier for you when you entered this industry? Or do you believe it became even more difficult because every time you were on screen, people would say, Sri Devi's daughter, is she good enough? So there are many answers that I mm. would like to give for this. I think firstly, um, I do acknowledge that there is a certain amount of privilege. And uh, besides the privilege, it's just logistics and geography because my parents are in the industry i've been in circles where i've already been exposed to several makers and people from the fraternity that have been familiar with me i've been exposed to the public and the media since i was a kid privacy has never been a part of my life um, and so i guess that familiarity that mystery or that interest has always been there i've never felt the need to um, fight for attention. That's a struggle that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Another struggle that I don't know is waiting in lines to audition, the fight to put food on my table, or the fight to find a roof over my head. And all of these are the relatable struggles that the common man faces, the mm -hmm. common man with a dream. Um, but having said that, uh, there is, there's always a flip side. And uh, there are times where I do feel like any outsider, so to say, with maybe my filmography, the few films that I've done so far, and had he or she given the exact same performances and been as, uh, and I'd like to think I have been uh, quite reliable for my producers in terms of commerce. I don't think any of them have lost money on me. If, if an outsider had the exact same career that I have had so far, I think he or she would have been taken 
a lot more seriously than I'm taken. Because your first film, uh, Dhadak, did very well commercially. But having said yeah, that... But may not, did not get the kind of reviews you might have wanted. And every review that I read said, you know, Sri Devi's daughter, but still a question mark over her acting skills. Did that trouble you that you were always going to be compared with your mother? No, because, I mean, fine, the com comparisons... I think were valid because I think I could have been much better in that movie. And like I said, maybe I would have been taken more seriously and just been measured on what I'm putting out there. But maybe I wouldn't have gotten those opportunities if I wasn't my mother's daughter either. Yeah, that's a, you, you want to get into that? If you were not a producer, if she was not Sri Devi's daughter, if she was not part of this Kapoor Khandan in a way, would she have got the kind of breaks she did? How do you respond to those who say, oh, Bollywood See, uh, is nepotistic? See, partly what she spoke answers your question. But at the same time, let me tell you, see, your privileges or your, the fact that you, you are connected with film industry, your mother's a top star, your father's a, a producer, that can only give you an initial break or initial this thing. Mm -hmm. Finally, you see, it is your hard work, your talent, which matters. I mean, I can name several actors, like for instance, Keshore Sau was a top, one of the top directors. He launched his daughter, Naina Sau, with big fanfare. The film bombed, it didn't click, and she disappeared. Similarly, Vasan Joglekar was a big name in Marathi and Hindi cinema. He launched his daughter, they couldn't click. Ravi Tandon was a big director. He launched his son, it didn't work out for him. So you've got to have the talent in you. The so you're saying it's ruthless out there. The viewer will judge you based Absolutely. on your talent I'm, at the end so of I've the given day. you enough examples, and if you have enough time, I can give you more examples. The, the biggest tragedy in, within the industry was Ram Teri Ganga Meli was the biggest blockbuster of Raj Kapoor's career. And it had his son, Rajiv Kapoor. After that film, he got no films. So how do you answer that? So there are enough examples. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because... Now, who, now tell me, I'm not as big as Raj Kapoor, nor was my wife as big as Raj Kapoor. So, I mean, his children were privileged. His children got attention, but you see, when the, when the talent isn't there, when, when the audience decides to reject you, they reject you. Rishi Kapoor stayed on right till he left. Sure. Because he was talented, not because he was Raj Kapoor's son. Rajiv Kapoor extinguished after his, the biggest blockbuster of Raj Kapoor became a huge success and he couldn't, he couldn't move on. The, the reason I'm asking this is I, I sense at one level you know, particularly within a section of Bollywood, a belief that there are these Bollywood kids who get away with too much and we have to struggle. Do you, uh, do you sense that with your co-stars at times or you believe that this is much more an external perception, not so much in the industry? In the industry, it's all about talent. Will your film work or not? That's a tricky question to answer. Um, I think I've been fortunate enough to work with people who at least have made it seem like they are happy to work with me and um, think that I'm deserving of the place that I'm in. But like Papa said, we do have a foot in the door. Our initial opportunity did come to us much easy, uh, easier than it does to other people. That, that, that's about it. That's about it. You know, because you, go, you did a film like Gunjan uh, Saxena, The Kargil Girl, and you got a Filmfare nomination for it. Not easy, you know, in your what, second or third film to, to pick up a Filmfare nomination. Did yet? Was that the moment where you felt, look, I'm here to stay. I'm part of the Hindi film industry. Are you now completely comfortable? Are you still seen as Janvi Kapoor now? Or are you still seen as Sri Devi and Boni's daughter? Let, me no, let, let her answer that. Very existential question. <laughs> no, 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 but I, I, I mean, how do you, I, I, when you go out there, do people sort of judge you, you think, at times, always of looking close? Of course they judge you. I've, but... It's a part of my life. It's always been a part of my life. Mm -hmm. My identity is so intrinsically attached to the fact that I come from a privileged household. I can't divorce my identity from the fact that my parents have made a name from the, from, for themselves that might always overshadow my name. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. My only thrill in life and aim in life is to make them proud. And to hopefully keep doing films because that's what I live for. My love for films overrides everything. So you can call me privileged, call me whatever you want. But I don't think anyone I've worked with can point a finger at me and say she's taken her position for granted. And that's something that I hope to maintain. I think films is almost in the blood of this Kapoor household. 
I was telling you before the shoot, you can do a leaven, a cricket leaven of all of you, right? There's Arjun, there's Janvi, there's uh, Janvi's sister yeah, getting into, into the film industry, Anil Kapoor, uh, Sonam Kapoor. Sonam Harsh. Kapoor. Harsh. <coughs> Why don't you do a film? You, you're a great cricket fan. You should start an a IPL <laughs> team called the Kapoors. Yeah, well, at this point of time, we are almost 10 or 11 of us actively involved in acting. Including you. <laughs> including you're coming in a film where you're acting as the husband of the one and only uh, uh, Dimple, Dimple Kapadia. <laughs> right? Dimple Kapadia Khanna. You're acting opposite her. Well, you see... Uh, there as a husband. Been, see, they're, they're, you know, initially when Love offered me this film, I was reluctant to do it. It's thanks to my kid, my son, my daughters, and my brother Sanjay also, who pushed me into it. And for me, when I got into it, the high was okay. I'll be getting to work in a unit which has got great actors, you know, Ranbir, Shraddha, Dimple. But the other high point was, you see, in real life, Sri was my wife. In real life, I was getting to play Dimple's husband. So that was a big high because, you see, <laughs> our uh, when, when we were young, Dimple was, a, you know, she was a heartthrob of all the youngsters around. Right. So to get to play her husband also was a high. So you've got it, you've got it made, you because you're playing the role of one of your heartthrobs from college days, and you married the heartthrob of not an entire generation. Not my heartthrob, not my heartthrob, but many youngsters, <laughs> many others. Many in the industry. Have you, did you warn him before he decided to come in front of camera, or did you encourage him? Come on, Dad, let's see you in front of yeah, camera. You've done 50 him. films as a producer. I encouraged him because I always knew that that acting ka kida was there in him. <laughs> Thousand percent, so you have no idea, I remember. Me and mom used to sit and look at him because after he'd come back from work every night, he'd put on, what was that channel? Before you, after, or no, what channel was it? It used to play all those old Hindi songs. Yeah, yeah, the music, uh -huh. you know, the music channels. Yeah, the, the music channels that would play music, all the... Music all now. Shami and, Ji's songs uh, or Shami. all See, I've been a songs. fan of Shami Kapoor and Sharma Tagore. Right. And I've been a huge fan of the songs of Devanand Rajesh Khanna. You know, like me, Kapoor. like all of us. But that's besides the point. The point is that me and mom would just sit and stare at him from the dining table because while these songs played, he'd like enact all of the ah, songs he'd do and that sing sort of the, the, the And like he'd break into dance and me and mom and mom would just, she would look at me straight in the eye and say, thank God your father didn't become an actor. There'd be no holding him. I wouldn't be able to control him then. Basically, you were envious of the fact that yaar, mera bhai Anil Kapoor ko maine launch kar diya. Mera dusra bhai Sanjay Kapoor ko maine launch kiya. Meri BV number one star ban gaye. Main bhi star banna chahta hoon. So that's why you've decided to act a bit. No, no. Oh, he's a natural actor there. No, There's I, an actor in him I see all the time. I think if it wasn't for looking out for his brothers and if it wasn't for taking care of his father's business, and I think also his love for production, I think he would have maybe dabbled in it. And now he has the luxury and who at this age, after getting so far in one career path, would have the chance to try his hand at something new. And so I thought he should go <laughs> for it. And another high point that he's not mentioned is that he knows that Love Sir is a big fan of food. Mm. And he said, So that was the main attraction. This is a good Punjabi in him who wanted yeah. a good meal at the he, end of the day. He is amongst, I call him Mini Kiasif. He's amongst the most relaxed film directors I've, I have come across. You know, in, in, in that sense, you've sort of worked with lots of directors, lots of actors. From the outside, a lot of us believe that film production is a very risky business. You're completing 50 films now. That's a huge amount, including big hits like Mr. India and flops, like uh, Rup Ki Rani, uh, uh, Choro Ka Raja. How do you handle it? How do you handle the highs and lows of the film industry? Is that a big challenge? Well, it... It used to be a challenge, and now it's part of my DNA. Uh, DNA, part of my journey. I've reached uh, this far with all these ups and downs. I've seen the highs. I've experienced the lows. I was in major debt. I, I mean, with sheer determination and support of my family, I have got out of it, and I'm again making two, three, four films at one time. At one time, including South Indian films. Including, in fact, in these COVID times, they've produced eight films. Five have released and two are yet to release. Three are yet to release. Nazar nahi lagni chahi. Nazar nahi lagni Is there an, you know, you mentioned before we did this interview that the one thing that stands out about stars is their insecurity. Their sense that before a big film is released, they are always worried, will it work, not work. And you seem to think that's a good thing. See, it is not just before release. The insecurity is there. You know, I've, I've seen Anil career, I've seen through Sanjay's career, seen through Arjun's career. Of course, 
major, uh, I mean, for a lot of periods, Sri's career too. I mean, much before I got married to her, I was uh, following her career and giving her mother tips. Right. And interacting with Sri, and I knew how she used to be insecure before she starts any film. Same, similarly, Anil used to be insecure. In fact, till the day the film starts, his, he would tell me, Boni, can you push the launch of the film by a month? I'm not fully prepared. Same thing Sri used to feel. Can we start the film after a few days? I mean, if, if I happen to be the producer. And if there is another producer who's planned a film with them, the thought is, I wish I get a few more days to prep. So this is a good thing. You know, the insecurity in Arjun, the insecurity in Janvi, insecurity which was there in Anil, which is still there in Anil. Insecurity in Sanjay. Sanjay was a little privileged because, you see, he was introduced as a star, which was probably unfortunate. Mm. But then again, my other uh, younger daughter, Kushi, she, till the time she started shooting, she didn't know whether she'd be able to. In fact, even when she went for an audition to Zoya, Zoya told me how nervous she was. So, which is a very good sign, which means they are not complacent, they are not con super confident, in spite of the lineage. The insecurity in them, the insecurity in most of the actors, sincere act, you know, that shows that they are sincere. It, there's no sibling rivalry, right, between you and, and your sister. Is there Janvi versus Kushi? Tomorrow there'll be a film magazine out there putting the two of you, and who's the better actor? Does that worry you at all? I think if ever a day like that came, I think we'd be very thrilled about it. Because we, I think we're each other's biggest cheerleaders. And I think I'd be happier in her success than my own. And I think she'd be happier in my success than her own. And I think that's how we've been brought up. There's, there's just too much. Uh, we root, we root for each other too much to ever even think like well, that. Were you all born to be film stars, you think? Do you think that... How can I say, yes, sir? No, in the, in the, sense, no, no, in the sense that when you were young in school, uh, going around with your parents, did you always think, I will one day want to be before the camera? I, I always knew that I wanted to be in front she of the camera. She never shared that with us. That's a different thing. You never shared it with them, but, you, but that was your dream. Sort of. It was, I, I don't know if it was ever about the fanfare of it or like I want to be, you know, a heroine. It was always, Papa, but do you remember those days where I would skip school and get 10, 15 DVDs and just sit and watch? So I think that... She, she's been a major movie buff, like my son. You are you watch all kinds of movies? Yeah, I think it came more from like, I am so consumed with my love for films that I can't imagine putting my mind anything else other than this. You had a favourite star or someone whom you looked up to? Oh, so many people. Everyone has a couple of favourites. I think I had a huge phase with uh, Vahida Ji. Wow. Um, and Nutan. Uh, and, uh, Nutan. Nutan Ji. So you but saw the films of Vahida Rahman and yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, the Nutan. Whole, you'd the whole, see, whole, whole you'd lot see of the Kaga, uh, Kagaske Fool and oh, all the old films. All of Guru Dutt's films. All of Sai Baby or Gulam, oh, the works. Yeah, Meena Kumari was my favourite. And <laughs> even... Uh, Madhubala and Mr. and Mrs. Pachpan, I used to love her comic Wow, so you, 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 you sort of embrace films of the 1950s and 60s, yeah. even in 2022. And you, of course, as you told us, were a Shami Kapoor fan. Yes, I huh? was and I am. Chahe kuj, uh, koi mujhe mujhe jangli jangli kahe. Kahe. In fact, you see, a couple of years back, just before COVID, Javed had his 75th birthday. Yes. He dressed up as... You dressed up as Shami, Shami Kapoor? Shami Kapoor. I'll show you that video. I danced also like Shami Kapoor. You, are, and I you, got you, the... you can dance a bit for us if you want <laughs> from Jangli. I was awarded the best... You know, the theme of the party was you've got to dress up like stars of 60s and 70s. Right. So I choose to wear what Shami Kapoor wore in Jangli. Are wah. And the same way, I sent my dress man to... You know, we couldn't get that uh, topi what Shami Kapoor had worn in Jangli. So he probably went to Delhi and got <laughs> that to me. Actually, uh, Boni is full of anecdotes and a wonderful one he told me about Sri Devi Ji was how he had a separate small car for Sri Devi to go to buy the best fish in the market, right? Yes. Right? She loved her fish. Yes, yeah, she... she no, he, more for the kid. Yeah, <laughs> we loved the fish and he loved the fish and she loved making sure that we got the best fish. So possible. she, the great Sri Devi would go to the market yes. to buy fish for her kids and for you. Yes. Yeah, me and yes. mom used to go together. Yeah, you would go with mom. South Indian or North Indian? How, how do you... You know, in a way, you're a great combination of, of South and North. Prefer South Indian food, North Indian food? South Indian. I think I relate more to that side of... Uh, of myself, I guess, and I think Kushi is more North Indian in her. 
See, like she's picked up the tradition from her mother. Mm. She climbs up to Tirupati at least once or twice a year. Before every release, she makes it a point. If she missed, because of COVID, she missed out, she tried to make up for it also. And she likes all so the... So you're very devout, go off there to, to Tirupati before the and launch of walk, any film. Walk. More than film, it's, it's, uh, it's on the occasions of mom's birthday, New Year's and my birthday. You go to Tirupati. Yeah, so these three times I like to climb up. You're, you're a devout, uh, are you as devout or are you a good khata pita Punjabi? I'm a... I'm a, I'm devout about my family. I'm absolutely devoted yeah, to my... He came with me. I, for New Year's, I took you two times. Yeah, a couple of times. I've traveled with Sri also. Huh. Not that I'm averse to any such uh, spiritual trips or uh, religious trips. But at the same time, I, I, I am more devoted to the family setup. My children, my brothers, my mother. I mean, my priority is that and I feel if they are happy, I'm happy. So... You know, and when my father, till he was alive, I mean, I just wanted him to feel that he is comfortable, he is happy, all his children are doing well. And very interestingly, Boni's father, Surinder Kapoor, was actually a socialist who <laughs> actually worked with the likes of Achut Patwardhan and uh, Acharya Kriplani in the 1950s. That's right. From that, that socialism <laughs> to the big bad world of cinema. <laughs> it's not a bad world at it, all. It's a nice world of cinema, right? So, but it... it you know, it, it just shows across generations. Your father worked closely with the likes of Raj Kapoor, Pithvi Raj Kapoor, then... Shami Kapoor. Shami Kapoor. You come into the 70s, 80s. Now you are in the 21st century. I mean, you've seen 60 years of uh, cinema between three generations. Yes, I probably am amongst the fortunate few who's seen phases, different phases. The last see, of the Mohicans. The last of the Mohicans. The last I, of... I have... I have, I have vivid memories of Raj Kapoor, Dilip Kumar, Devanand being the three superstars of that era. Right. Then I have vivid memories of Rajinder Kumar, Shami Kapoor, Sunil Dutt in one era. You know, we always had three or four stars in each decade. Then it came down to Rajesh Khanna, Jitender, Shashi Kapoor. Then it came down to Rishi, you know, Rishi Kapoor. And so, and then finally Kumar Gaurav, uh, Sunny Diol, Sanjay Dutt, Anil Kapoor. And then the Khans. Then the Khans. And now, the next generation. So I have seen the growth and at the same time enjoyed their work of several generations. You think the bigger stars were in the past than they are today, quite simply because today's today stars will have far more exposure. So the likes of Vahida, Rehman, Meena, Kumari, will we ever throw up the Madhubalas of the world or not? It was easier to, for them to be aspirational. I think now the game is more to be relatable. So I, I think stardom has evolved. A That's lot. a nice word, from aspirational to relatable. relatable yeah. You think you're more relatable in a way, your generation? I, th I think my generation is, but like I said, and like we all have established again and again and again, that I guess my privilege makes it hard for people to relate to me. But I think... But they will, they will, very soon they will. Spoken like a true father. <laughs> like a true father. <laughs> yes, you know, he's got a... You've got this entire Kapoor Khandan to handle. I mean, Janvi, Arjun and Khushi. See, I all say... All three of I them say, in one room. I say this because, you see, I have... Anil is a very hard-working actor. Very... Even till today, is a hard-working My son is a very hard-working actor. I see the hard work that she puts in for every film. I have seen the hard work Khushi put... Imagine rehearsing, going for skating class. Khushi at this age... She goes for a skating classes, she goes for a diction classes, she goes for a dance classes. So all these things people don't get to know or see. No, but can I, can I yes. tell you the flip side to that? All of this is, and I'm not denying that we work hard. We work really hard. But, but even this sounds like privilege to the common man. struggle casting director So it's very, that's relatable, this is unrelatable, but we put in the hours, we put in our sweat, blood, there's turmoil, there's pressure, there's all of that. But you know, he looks like a proud father today. And why, I think we've given him enough reason to be proud. And, and that in a way is the best Tribute you can pay to your late wife as well. The well, amount, what you've done for your children. Tribute to my late wife, Sri, and at the same time, tribute to my ex-wife, Mona, because Arjun and Anshula, you know, today have flowered into, uh, I mean, very, very obedient, very loving, very affectionate. They've binded the family together. And it's one big fa happy family? I think, I think it's a family that 
that no matter what, we'll always have each other's back. And that's more than most families can say about themselves. Well, what can I say? I think you've got a, uh, a long career ahead of yourself. You've just started off. so. You hope so. And he's had a long career and he's reinventing himself now as an actor. <laughs> So, so who really, knows? Really Next time, Best Supporting Actor Filmfare Awards, Boni Kapoor. Not just as an actor. You see, I ventured into regional cinema too. That's see, right. I, uh, I have done enough Tamil films, continue to do Tamil films. I've done Telugu films. I will continue to do Telugu films. I want to now, you know, I've done a Bengali film too, long time back. And you think the audiences are coming I've back? I've done a Marathi film. And you think, Boni, the audiences are coming back to the theatres? Yes, they surely are and they will be. Because you see, the fun of watching a film when, the when there's light only on the screen and everything else is dark. And you know the crowd will react to all the good things, the claps, the whistles. Yeah, it's community viewing. It, it binds you. It's an experience. That's See, that's the outing which every family enjoys. That's the outing which every youngster, a group of friends, they go. They go. I remember, we used to just go and you know, whistle in the theatre for every good dialogue the hero throws or every good scene which we get to see. Yeah, no, even and, for and, and, you, and you think that will always be there? 100%. So I'll ask you a final question. Have you ever been to any of your films and sat in the last row and just looked at the audience around you, how they are reacting to you? Have you done that already? Yes, I've only had two theatrical releases, Dharak yes. and uh, Ruhi. And I did it for both. I think during the time Ruhi, it was a, there was some rule of only 50% occupancy. So... Um, Dharak, I went to Gaty Galaxy actually, and there was all of that hooting and whistling and like coin throwing and dancing on jhingat and. And you felt good. I felt good. I was. I. I mean, honestly, it's hard to be like, yeah, kya kam kya maine because I knew um, I was very back footed, but uh, it was an experience that I'll always remember and cherish. Well, I think both of you have much to look forward to. As absolutely, a result, absolutely, and uh, God has been kind. So, yes, uh, God has been kind. So, to both of you, I wish you all the very best. India today, India tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining me. Very special, father and uh, daughter, daddy's girl. Thanks very much for joining us here on the show. Bye for now.